Hi, Wade Zarazinski, Senior Learning and Development Manager from Zoom Info. This best practice is short, is designed to showcase the best tips and tricks for leveraging workflows within Sales OS. From intent, if you have a pre-built intent search focused on your segmentation and intent topics, if you have a uh, set of parameters here that are going to work for you, well, make sure you do save and subscribe that search as a best practice, but uh, you can take this intent search and use our workflows feature to automatically generate leads in your uh, Salesforce environment or uh, to notify you of changes via your email. Going into an intent generated search is different than a streaming intent search. Uh, intent is targeting off of weekly or daily intent data, while streaming intent is based off of real-time streaming intent, which includes that uh, there are more triggering events with streaming than there are with weekly and daily. Keep that in mind as uh, when we do get to filtering and limiting this workflow, uh, the limits are going to be vastly uh, different within those two options. When you do create an intent workflow, your intent topics, signal score, and audience strength parameters should carry in here, but you can always click to edit in the natural language programming options. You will also want to make sure that you are in this natural language programming, clicking to select specific buying committee targets based off the profiles that you've created in your settings page or alternatively manually filtering within the workflow to the key contacts that you want this to automatically export. As this is a cybersecurity intent focused search, I'll be targeting VP and C-level contacts in information security and IT. You'll see that the company level filters applied in my intent search have also applied to my workflow. Now, as a best practice, I do recommend beyond the set requirement for a business email that this export function will run, requiring any additional data that you would find valuable. Major benefit there beyond, of course, getting you only contacts with mobile phone numbers and direct phone numbers on top of the emails, is that it will also limit the amount of bulk credits consumed by this workflow. You can alter the accuracy score slider. You can apply additional location, company, or technology parameters here. Once you have confirmed that the filters are going to be what you want to target and automate off of, apply them, and then move into the Salesforce filters. There are a large amount of options within specifically the Salesforce and other CRM filters. If you do want to change the export uh, end goal, you can do that within the natural language programming. Exporting to a CRM is very different than exporting to an email or Slack notification. Keep in mind, using this with a CRM is the major best practice. Uh, the email notifications are valuable, but can also be done through the save and subscribe function. Now, I will point out in the Salesforce filters that you can toggle this to go at net new targets that do not exist in your CRM, or to automatically export contacts around accounts that are in your Salesforce environment. There are a lot of additional mapping options that you'll find here to create customized workflows around specific account types or other parameters in your Salesforce. You can add multiple Salesforce filters here to really make this customized to the level you need. Now, if I do switch that back to net new targeting, I have the option to select to export to leads or to contacts and exporting account level information. Within lead or contact options, you can also choose to move those exported leads directly into a campaign within your Salesforce. Now, when you are creating a workflow, you have the ability to assign these exported leads in Salesforce to specific users. I've got myself selected here, but I could easily assign these leads to a different user within my Salesforce environment. And there's a lot of power there. Make sure that you review those options 
as they can be absolutely game changing. Now, this workflow is ready to go, except there are some very important additional options here I wanna cover. Specifically, I would highly recommend any time that you are creating a workflow from any of the different triggering options in our system, make sure to give it a very customized name. I'm gonna be labeling this with my initials. I'm gonna say cybersecurity intent, and it's got West Coast targeting, and I'll also label it with C and VP. Now I'm gonna have that as a label moving forward so I can easily identify, turn off, pause, or delete or edit this workflow down the road. Please ensure that you choose the frequency that would be valuable for you. Keep in mind, again, streaming intent is going real time. Daily intent is happening every day. Weekly intent is a little bit more limited. It will only run at the end of the week. With any timing parameters set, it is also critical to limit the exported records. Ensure that you are really cutting this down to an approachable scale. At this level, I'm exporting up to 20 contacts per company, up to 500 companies per week. I need to cut that down so that I'm not overutilizing my company bulk credits. I will then change this just to 25 companies max per week, and I'll just say 25 contacts per company. That means instead of 10,000 bulk credits potentially used, this will be limited to only 125 contacts and bulk credits consumed per week. This is a pretty critical step. Make sure that is set within the workflows you create. Now you can uh, choose to update existing uh, or duplicate leads in Salesforce or ignore them. You can also create duplicate records, not something I recommend as a best practice. I would usually stick with updated. That can also be a benefit in your Salesforce environment as it will allow you visibility over uh, potential companies that you haven't really generated opportunities around that are actively researching your solutions. Now, if you create the workflow, it will be available to edit and review in the workflows tab. A couple quick best practices here before we go there. I do want to point out that any advanced search, if you have saved and subscribed to the advanced search, it can be used as a workflow trigger. You'll want to make sure you select the saved and subscribed search. You'll want to make sure that you are editing what the trigger filters are. And of course, as a best practice, you'll also want to review those Salesforce options. And of course, limit the exports flowing from your saved search. Best practice again is to always change that workflow name and then you can create that workflow. Another really valuable triggering uh, source in our sales OS platform to create a workflow from is the website's reverse IP lookup tool. This tool identifies companies that are visiting your company website. There are a lot of filter options available. Once you have filtered a website search down, you can also use this to create workflows. One best practice would be to set a minimum number of unique visits or page views to eliminate any accidental visitation from this automatic lead generator. Now, once you've set a workflow, it will be living in that workflows tab. Here you have the option to pause a workflow or reactivate one. You can always click in to edit a workflow. The clone option is incredibly powerful in that you can use that on top of a foundational workflow that you may not activate to duplicate and then edit. That can save you some time and hassle. Of course, if a workflow has become obsolete for you, I would highly recommend deleting it from your system. Now there are also some powerful options for admin users to control the different workflows that are created by your user licenses. Those can be set up 
within the admin portal. Here you have options to enable workflows for non-admin users or edit a specific batch of users that have approval to create workflows. I would always recommend as a best practice to utilize our approval queue so that you can maintain visibility over your bulk credit consumption created by user created workflows. You do have some consumption settings here to either allow admin users to exceed their bulk credit limit assigned or non-admin users. You can turn those off to make sure that those workflows are being restricted by those bulk credit limits set within the admin portal. So I hope that these best practices have been helpful. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about workflows. Be sure to check out all of our other best practice shorts to level up your learning and maximize your leverage of Zoom info.